<laughs> hey everybody, uh, we are uh, starting our new homestead page and so I didn't know how to transfer videos over uh, and so we are going to kind of start over from the start. Uh, start over from the start. That makes perfect sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, my name's Justin. My name is Melissa. And this is uh, Faith Built Homestead. Uh, so this morning as we uh, kind of get some stuff around, we're going to try to cook breakfast. Yes. And we're going to make dinner at the same time yes. that we're making breakfast. Right? Okay. And we're going to try to give you guys a little bit of our history uh, of why we have started this. Look at my crazy, uh, <laughs> crazy hair I got going here. Um, we have been in revival uh, this week. This is a Saturday. Uh, and it's been a long week of revival, so if I look sleepy, uh, that's probably what's going on. Um, and it's raining this morning, and so uh, we was out feeding animals while ago and I got all wet. But this is uh, what we have uh, come to call uh, our priesthood. We are still in our uh, first house that we got when we got married, and we're trying to get it finished up and sold uh, so that we can eventually uh, try this homestead-type dream. Uh, that we have that we feel led to do by the Lord right it's more than a dream uh, we feel like it's a calling so please like and subscribe uh, to our page uh, if it is you like the content that you see this morning we're frying squirrel uh, and eggs for breakfast and the wife's making ham and beans uh, for, dinner. for dinner tonight so uh, come along uh, if food sounds good to you uh, take a look about how this uh, is done here thank you guys for watching uh, we'll take you along for this morning so this, uh, sorry, it's probably a little gruesome for some folks, but uh, this is um, squirrel. Uh, this is a squirrel that we've harvested off of our own place here, uh, and my yesterday, yeah, and my wife uh, really uh, her favorite time to eat squirrel uh, is for breakfast. Uh, fried uh, squirrel and eggs uh, is hard to beat if you got the time. Uh, squirrel gravy with some biscuits uh, and eggs. Uh, I know what you guys are thinking, uh, some real hillbillies, I get it, but man alive, it is some tasty stuff. And so, we'll show you guys kind of what it is to break down a squirrel and uh, fry it up uh, here this morning. And my wife is over here uh, making some delicious ham and beans uh, for tonight uh, as we uh, try to get ready to go for revival. It's handy to have a nice little crock pot. Scraps. Go to the chickens. Yes, don't get rid of nothing, right? Um, they'll eat just about anything. Uh, so make sure you get all that stuff out to your chickens. I'm going to try something different. We have a sourdough starter. And so I, on my pour off this morning that I had to pour off, uh, the sourdough is active and ready. I'm going to try to use this as part of our squirrel batter. How do you think it will turn out? I have no idea. <laughs> Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good. Uh, this morning... Like I said, frying squirrel. Can I use this to cut squirrel? Okay. Um, frying squirrel for breakfast. Wife's making ham and beans for dinner. We're in revival, uh, which is always an exciting time uh, in this household. Uh, if you know anything about uh, serving the Lord in any sort of that capacity, it's always good. So let's. Uh, I don't know, sweetheart. You want to tell them kind of how we started this journey? What we how this all started. You want me to tell them? Uh, or unless you want me to. Do you want me to tell them? Okay, we both can. Both can. You just interrupt me where you want to. Okay. okay. Will that work? Sure. So you will find watching these videos uh, that uh, I'll probably do a lot of the talking because I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I like to visit. So um, nothing. I'm not trying to. Uh, for anybody judgmental watching, I'm not trying to cut my wife off, right? We're just talking. So, we uh, we bought this house that we live in now, uh, just outside the city limits. Um, we bought it with the intention of fixing it up. Uh, in one of these days, uh, moving further out in the country. I had a job that was about 30 minutes away. Uh, good paying job, especially for these parts. Uh, and we pretty well had... Uh, the world by the tail, did we not? I mean, yeah. you know, life was. Thought we did, <laughs> thought we did anyway. Uh, life was good. Uh, we was working along, and uh, we had uh, Luella. Uh, we had our bait, one of our first uh, kid, 
Uh, and things was uh, going. They're at their grandma's, by the way. Yeah, we are kidless this morning. Uh, so we had our first kid, and um, things were good, man. Uh, we were we were plugging along good. I was preaching. Uh, we were um, at a church that we uh, still at that church uh, that we greatly enjoy. Uh, thankful the Lord has brought us to that place, and uh, things was things was good, right? And then uh, process of time. Uh, <coughs> felt as if uh, the Lord uh, moved upon us uh, that I should quit my job, my very good, solid job for around these parts, uh, with a brand new family, a uh, brand new wife, brand new, like I had a wife before you, but <laughs> clarify that, right? <laughs> uh, just got married, uh, young, uh, good paying job. Uh, baby, uh, insurance, had all that, uh, and uh, man, it was just like the Lord uh, pressed upon us uh, that I needed to quit my job and pastor full time. And so, um, I would love to say that we just, you know, had great faith and just dove off into it, but uh, we had to lay out some fleeces, or we did lay out some fleeces, um, asking the Lord uh, that His will be done, not ours, but His, right? Uh, and the Lord seemed to answer. Uh, those fleeces. If you don't know what laying a fleece is, if you've never heard of that term, uh, it's basically asking God uh, for a very specific sign um, so that you know that it's His will uh, and not just something you came up with on your own. Uh, and so uh, we did that uh, and the Lord answered uh, to quit your job, right? Uh, and pastor full time. And so uh, that's what my wife and I talked about, and um, the workplace that I was working at during all of that passed a policy that uh, I could not honestly stick to and pastor a church at the same time, and uh, I had gotten to the point where I understood uh, that I was a uh, servant of God first, and the rest of it has to shake out where it shakes out. And so, uh, it was... Uh, quite the interesting transition, right? Yeah. Uh, so everything was going great um, when we first made the leap. Uh, and then uh, my wife got sick. Yeah. A little bit, right? Uh, and I had some issues, had some, uh, I guess it was, uh, had some hormone issues uh, that we had to figure out. And uh, uh, she got pretty sick uh, and we was going to doctor after doctor after doctor trying to figure out what was going on uh, and in that process um, we were spending uh, uh, everything we had on those doctor visits basically uh, in medicines trying to uh, help her feel better because she was uh, really sick and so uh, through all of that uh, we uh, got very financially tight <laughs> to say the least, right? Uh, very, very, very financially tight. Now, uh, we both grew up gardening. Um, we both grew up in the country, fishing and hunting and uh, around the cows and all that good stuff. And so, uh, we had always kind of had this dream anyway of moving out further into the country, uh, having a little farm to raise our kids on, uh, and those kinds of things. But when we were praying about, all right, Lord, uh, this ain't working. What do we need to do? Um, we felt as though uh, we needed to um, drastically change uh, our lives. And so by drastically changing our lives, I mean we felt prayerfully uh, that we are to uh, live a extremely simple uh, life that allows us to be free to serve the Lord in whatever capacity you have us to serve him in, right? right. So, um, what that means for us, uh, that means we are uh, trying to get our house sold. Uh, we are learning uh, how to grow enough garden uh, to uh, supply our own food needs. Uh, we are doing things like shooting squirrels uh, and rabbits uh, and those types of things to supplement our food, 
my wife has learned uh, about all of these amazing greens that just grow naturally uh, here in the good old state of Missouri. Uh, we've learned about mushrooms, uh, still learning about mushrooms, that you can eat. Uh, we plan on uh, having uh, the ability after we sell this place uh, that we are, we're still going to have electric, but we're going to have uh, very minimal uh, electric, as minimal as we think we can get by with, uh, to try to cut, uh, like, so we're going to try to have a, an alternate electric source, right? Uh, kind of an off-grid uh, type setup, uh, so that we don't have an electric bill. Uh, so we're trying to have as little bills and as little debt uh, as we can possibly have, and have as simple Right? Simple, simple life. So we started that process here while we live very much on the grid uh, and very much uh, still what would be considered a fairly uh, normal uh, life. Uh, so we kind of started the process yeah. uh, to get ourselves used to that idea. So, uh, right, not all of it is extremely foreign, but um, we got oil lamps. We do yeah. use oil. We do use, so uh, I know what you're thinking, right? You liars, I can see your lights on right now. Yeah. Yes, we got lights on right now. Uh, we use the oil lamps of an evening um, whenever we're kind of wind down, right? And we found it to be uh, awesome. We, we love using the oil lamps. Yeah. Um, what else? We have no TV. Yes, right. We don't have TV. Yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> television. Uh, not that I'm against TV, um, but we don't have a TV. Uh, we had a beautiful, be can I tell you about our beautiful TV? <laughs> Alright, so, we had, we had like a, what was that thing, like a 60 inch? Almost 60, no, it was like a 52 or, 52 I inch, so the TV's like fish, they just get bigger with time. So, <laughs> it was, um, like a 52 inch flat screen, high definition beauty. Uh, and if you're a sports fan like I am, uh, you can watch your football on there. You can watch the sweat run down the dude's faces, right? I mean, that's how clear it was. Uh, and we felt led to get rid of it. And so what do we end up uh, trading? You want to tell them what we traded our TV off for? <laughs> we traded chickens for our TV. Well, traded our TV for our chickens, excuse that's me. Right. <laughs> So, can't eat your TV, right? No. Uh, can't boil it long enough to make it work. And so, uh, that is the type of changes that we've started making when the weather allows. Uh, anybody else out there do your laundry by weather? Um, when the weather allows, yeah. uh, we try to do our laundry and hang it out on the line uh, instead of running a clothes dryer. And... My oldest is three years old, and our little baby is actually just about three months old. And we use cloth diapers when we're at home most of the time. We use cloth diapers, and so I hang those on the line. Um, and I'm sure some of you women are like, "Oh my goodness," <laughs> but um, it's it's just a lot better. It it really is. So we have. Uh... So interrupt me if I'm wrong, right? But we've saved a ton of money uh, by using yes. the cloth diapers. Um, is it worth the exchange, you think? Like, Maybe. so your uh, disposables, right? You just throw them away, mm -hmm. good to go. But it costs a lot more. Yeah. Your uh, cloth diapers, you got to wash them out, uh, rinse them out. And you got to kind of manage them, right? You got to make sure. Is it worth so, the time? I think so. Um, so I've used disposables with my three-year-old. Um, so I know both sides, um, but when we got a, it's just like a $20 sprayer on Amazon that you can hook up yourself to the toilet, and so, you know, if she does the duty, um, I just spray it off, you know, I, that's just, that's just part of it, but, um, as long as you do laundry, which you do anyway, at least every other day, um, do a load every other day it's it's fine um, we save a ton of money and she gets way less diaper rashes um, she loves them a lot more and I can tell um, yeah, I don't have to use desitin like hardly at all so we do use every once in a while we use disposables like we're going to go we on do. All day like long. for revivals or like 
church stuff sometimes I'll use I've used the cloth diapers for that stuff too um, but um, I actually had a small baby shower and we got a bunch of diapers and so I use them whenever I'm out sometimes but you can tell like she's not as comfortable right she's yeah. a lot more squirmy yeah. uh, in those uh, diapers so something I found interesting a lot of this stuff that we have tried to transition away from we don't have a microwave uh, anymore we got rid of it because uh, we want to our life's not going to involve a microwave so we just said you know what let's go ahead and get used to living without it um, a lot of this stuff we have found like it's just so much better now uh, it's a little more work it's a little more effort but it's just better right uh, yeah it's simpler it's very simple uh, so I don't know about you guys right if you guys grow a garden at all but like a garden fresh tomato and one from the store uh, regular grocery store is completely different it's a completely oh, yeah. different thing and so um, you have to figure out right is it worth uh, the trade-off for you so I didn't really show the whole breaking it down process on the squirrel so basically uh, all you got to do right is you cut the back legs off uh, you cut the front shoulders off the front legs um, and then there's a little uh, kind of a, a strap along the back of meat that you can trim off uh, and then you basically just got like this backbone rib cage uh, area uh, and I fry it up too. Uh, there's not a lot of meat on there, but it's worth picking over, right? Uh, yeah. Ain't no need in throwing it away. Uh, and so uh, we're going to keep working on <laughs> breakfast this morning. Uh, a cup of coffee, uh, I believe, is in order. Would you like a cup? No, I'm okay. Do you want to fry these or scramble these? What do you want? Scrambled eggs and squirrel breakfast, oh champion. This is uh, right here. I don't know if you can see it. This is our coffee pot. It's another thing that we changed. Um, we plan on having a wood cook stove uh, in the long run. And so we use a, a teapot for a coffee pot. So you get the water boiling, um, you dump your grounds in there, your coffee grounds, uh, and you let it boil, what, about five minutes or so? Uh, really hard. Um, and then whenever it's done, after you put your scoops of coffee in there and it boils for like five minutes really, really hard. Uh, when it's done, you pull it off the heat and you put some ice in the top of it. And that ice or really cold water, one of the two. Uh, and it settles the grounds down and your coffee's at the top and the grounds are at the bottom. And it is a very smooth, delicious cup of coffee. Very good. You can tell a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a lot of this stuff, uh, can I just be honest with you, uh, I thought it was just a bunch of hippie crazy stuff that people just kind of made up uh, but I have found that there actually is a huge difference in a lot of this stuff and that's coming from somebody that's extremely skeptical or right? like I just didn't think there would be yeah. but there is the coffee is super smooth super good uh, my wife uh, has become a uh, black coffee drinker yes. uh, <laughs> they're doing that so anyhow let's get the batter on the squirrel what do you Bowl for some... Yeah. Um, bowl, you mind doing like, you want to do the seasonings in it? What do you want? Cajun? Cajun, seasoning, salt, and pepper. Go oh, easy on the salt because the Cajun's got a lot of salt in it. Alright. Cajun, salt, and pepper? Yeah. So here, <laughs> right here. Oop, oh, I almost spilled it on the floor. That would have been a bad deal. Alright, so this is our. I know, it was, it was close. That was close. Um, living on the dangerous side. So, this is the pour off from your sourdough starter. So, uh, we started, my mom actually got us into trying to make sourdough, uh, and we love it. We love the stuff. Um, I'm trying to learn how far you can push it and press it uh, without killing it. Uh, I did kill a, a starter several uh, months ago by stretching it, uh, but I, I, I wanted to learn. So, uh, every morning uh, when you feed, uh, I feed our starter once every 24 hours. Super simple. I wish I remembered the lady uh, that I seen the recipe on YouTube and I would send, him, send you guys to her. We can look it up later and put it at the end of the video. Okay. All right. We can try that. Uh, no promises. I don't know. Put the link or something. I don't know if I can figure that out, but I'll try. Oh, okay. I'm not very techie, but we'll try. <laughs> so, it's really simple, right? It's just 3 eighths cup flour, unbleached flour. Uh, and a quarter cup water. Yeah, dump some of that back over in here. That's, yeah. Um, and so, uh, um, every morning you pour off about half. This is perfect. 
Yeah, about half of what you have left in there. Uh, and then you feed it again. And so I hate to waste the pour off. We feed it to our chickens. We've used it in biscuit recipes in the mornings. Um, of course, you make sourdough bread uh, and all of that stuff, and it's delicious. So I'm going to try, instead of using egg wash uh, for my squirrel, we're going to try this sourdough pour off. Uh, I hope it's good. I don't know why it wouldn't taste good. It's all good ingredients. I had a guy tell me one time, he's my dad. Uh, he likes to cook. Uh, there you go. And he said that as long as you use good ingredients, it's bound to turn out good, right? You use flavors that you like anyway. Uh, if you mix them all together uh, and it's all stuff you already like, it's bound to turn out good. Uh, which is kind of how I cook, uh, which is a little wild and crazy sometimes, but it works. So my wife is uh, an amazing, amazing cook, uh, but she has not, she has not really made, uh, right, uh, she didn't grow up uh, frying squirrel. Uh, this, some of this is kind of new to her, uh, and, so, and a lot of what she makes is extremely new to me, and so uh, I like to cook, I really enjoy cooking. I don't like dishes, but I enjoy cooking, and so uh, we are cooking this together this morning. This is kind of a... Um, you guys are almost being brought along on a morning date, right? This is almost like a morning <laughs> date for us, uh, not having the kids here, uh, just enjoying the morning. Got a late start. We slept in this morning uh, because we've been in revival all week, and it just felt good to sleep in. Got our animals fed. Got our animals fed, yeah. Uh, we'll show you guys, right? We got rabbits. Uh, we've got chickens. We have quail for the time being. <laughs> Uh, the quail's a lot get butchered come Monday. Maybe we'll show you guys that process. I've never done uh, quail butchering, so uh, you guys will get to see that. I know you guys can't see this, um, but my hands are all squirrely, so I'm not going to mess with the camera right now. Uh, just dipping it in the sourdough starter, and we're going to roll it in the flour. What did you season the flour with, sweetheart? Tell them what you put in here. Um, a little bit of salt and pepper and Cajun seasoning. So, if we get to doing much cooking videos, you will, uh, you guys will probably be like, man, they put that same stuff in like everything. But we really like Cajun seasoning. Uh, it puts a lot of good flavor on stuff. We like Caribbean jerk seasoning. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, we felt driven, uh, back to our story a little bit, we felt driven to uh, share with people uh, our story uh, to try and help them learn right that they can live differently they don't have to confine to the social norms that we uh, currently live in right um, that you can eat squirrel and it's not weird and it's not uh, nasty or crazy right uh, in fact it's delicious uh, tasty stuff dip it in some barbecue sauce <laughs> yeah pretty good. good to go right <laughs> treat it like you would treat anything else right don't just i was a little skeptical when we first were going to eat squirrel because I never, I don't think I ate squirrel before I met you. I don't think you did, no. No. So, uh, we want to teach people, right, uh, how to be a little bit different. It's okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world, right? To, uh, it's not, you're not some sort of outcast for eating squirrel. Um, also, we wanted to teach people, like, about the greens that my wife learned how to make. It blew me away when she started learning about all these natural edibles, which uh, it'll be next spring probably before we get into much of that because it's winter time, or getting into winter time. But, um, so you take somebody like me that likes to hunt, or squirrel hunt especially, if you go kind of in the spring or in the summertime, um, or early fall, you can uh, shoot some squirrels, uh, you can collect mushrooms, you can collect greens, uh, and you can have your entire dinner by the time you get home uh, and I'm just going to be frank and be honest with you, if you can do some of that, uh, it can really save uh, on your grocery bill, can't it, sweetheart? Yes, uh, very much. be a giant blessing uh, on your grocery bill. And uh, um, so we kind of also got inspired uh, by several people by watching their YouTube videos, all uh, right? Uh, so, uh, we're going to do some uh, name dropping. Uh, we, they don't support us, right, at all uh, in the fashion, you know, like financially or nothing. I would say they do support us in the idea of just spreading the same types of messages, right? Yeah. Uh, of living differently uh, yeah. and more free. Um, 
while you're on this side of eternity, right? So uh, we are Christians. Uh, we believe uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is the only way to go to heaven. Uh, and we believe that firmly. And we also believe that this side of eternity uh, is full of trials uh, and temptations uh, and trouble. Uh, and there's no doubt about that. Uh, however, we also believe uh, that you can live uh, a free life uh, on this yeah. side of eternity. And by freedom, I mean uh, serving the Lord, uh, in serving the Lord, that there is great freedom. And that's why we're doing this whole thing. But um, some people that has... Oh, uh, we got to tell you guys this. Um, so we watch um, Doug and Stacy, right? Uh, Homestead. What do they call their page? Um, is it just Doug and Stacy's like Homestead channel? I think so. Something like that. Um, they are fellow uh, Missourians, uh, if I yeah. am collecting that correctly, right? It's, it. I think just by looking at uh, their land, they're probably further north uh, in Missouri, up around Columbia direction than we are. Um, but uh, they are doing a log cabin uh, giveaway uh, right now. So um, look up their page, um, subscribe to their page. He's asking for a certain amount of subscribers and a certain amount of viewers. Um, and then they're giving away a free log cabin to one of their um, that subscribers. That is really cool, guys. Yeah. Go look it up. Yeah. So if this type of um, idea uh, is something that you would be interested in, then man alive, uh, go check them out, go look up their page, they got lots of interesting stuff on there, they do lots of interesting stuff, um, it's worth looking at, um, there's another fellow Missourian uh, homestead page that we like to watch, uh, and I haven't really figured out kind of where they're at, uh, land wise, yeah. uh, I'm not sure, uh, what are they, what are they called, do you remember? Living Traditions. Living Traditions yeah. Homestead, which they got great videos too. Uh, and I think they grow seeds for uh, Baker Creek, or uh, they've talked about growing seeds for Baker Creek. Yeah. Uh, and we've learned uh, lots of neat stuff from them and ideas. Another one uh, that I don't, if he's from Missouri, he hasn't said that. <laughs> I don't think that that's where they're from, but uh, we like Justin Rhodes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, homestead yeah. videos. Uh, they seem to be very uh, informative. Uh, he's the one that kind of um, inspired me to, uh, with our animals, uh, try to um, all, uh, keep them moving and mobile, right? Uh, keep them on fresh grass, not like our chickens, right? Not having them in one spot all the time, be able to move them around. Try to learn how you can um, have animals work together, right? So like if I can get our chickens to spread out our rabbit poop and eat the bugs um, that's in the rabbit poop, plus use that poop, to fertilize the next section of grass that they're eating, then that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Uh, that helps everybody. And so, just that kind of stuff. I ran out of sourdough starter for the backs. Do I need to, can I? Just give me a little milk. We'll pour some milk in there. So, uh, also, through all of this, we have uh, tried to reach out to some local connections um, around the area that we live in and so we do some trading that work uh, we do some trading um, and trying to help other people that are uh, living uh, somewhat similar lives right so we've got a lady that we like to buy milk from uh, fresh milk uh, however uh, she didn't have any last week and so we've got regular uh, store-bought milk uh, this week which is uh, a slight disappointment for all of us because we all really like uh, that fresh milk uh, she's got some Jersey cows, and uh, man alive, it's got a big old thick thing of cream on it, and uh, good stuff, right? My wife makes uh, soaps, homemade soaps, and uh, she also makes jellies and jams and that kind of stuff that we use to try to trade uh, for a lot of our stuff. And that's something else you guys need to understand, right? Uh, if you can, uh, if it's something that you're able to do, I encourage you to try to trade um, stuff as much as you possibly can. Um, everybody needs cash, I get that. Um, but if you can trade, it just seems like it works better for all the parties uh, involved. Um, yeah. Like we said earlier, we traded our TV for a bunch of chickens uh, not too long ago, uh, which was good for us. We got rid of our TV, which we needed to do. Uh, we got chickens that lay eggs. Uh, some of those chickens ended up being more roosters than we thought. Uh, and so we got some fresh chicken as well. That flour, right, it had squirrel in it, uh, so we can't really uh, do too much with it. So we pour it back into our chicken bucket. 
uh, so that our chickens can eat it. It's just ground up wheat, like, it's just really fine grain anyway. Might as well let them eat it. Uh, and they will eat it. They will absolutely eat it. So, here is our battered uh, squirrel. Uh, just rolled in sourdough starter uh, and flour. The backs are rolled in milk and flour. And uh, we will try to cook them up. Handy dandy cast iron skillet. That's something else that we've transitioned, right? We used to have a lot of Teflon non-stick skillets. Uh, a, they just don't hold up. Uh, well at all. B, uh, my understanding is a Teflon is really bad for you. Uh, and C, ain't nothing cooks like a cast iron skillet, right? Uh, ain't nothing can fry tater like a cast iron skillet. Um, so we uh, kind of transitioned. I think maybe we talked about maybe trying, what, stainless steel some too? Yeah, I like those too. Uh, in the future, uh, trying giving it a shot, seeing if we like it or not. So here, um, good old genuine pig fat, lard, right? Uh, that's what we are cooking our squirrel in. That's the grease that we're using. I'm probably going to dig out some bacon grease because this lard is running out, uh, which is handy because uh, some church family that we have uh, dropped off some ground up pig fat from their butcher. Uh, the other day to our house. They like to bless us uh, with that lard. And so uh, we render the lard down ourselves whenever we get it. Uh, we can do a video on that. We will, we will do a pig fat rendering video, right? <laughs> uh, super simple. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't do it if you have the ability, if you have the fat. Um, and uh, you can cook with it. I make my, soap with it. My wife makes soap with it. Do all kinds of stuff. It's really good. Uh, we do all kinds. Of, what else do we do that we probably need to teach people? Uh, my wife uh, knits. Right, do some videos on that. Do some videos on some soap making. Do some videos on canning. Do some videos on a sourdough starter. Uh, chickens, rabbits, uh, butchering squirrels and deer and rabbits and quail. Um, let us know uh, what kind of videos maybe uh, you would like to see. Uh, things that you think would help. Uh, also, I've got another YouTube channel um, called, um, what is it called? Your Bible one? Yeah, do you remember? Uh, Leaving Egypt. Leaving Egypt, that was it, I couldn't remember. So, I uh, had a YouTube channel just under my name, and I got really tired of telling people to look my name up, that felt very arrogant. Uh, and so, um, we started a new Bible teaching channel uh, that we'll have some videos on it soon, so uh, Bible study. Uh, and you guys will get a lot of Bible um, in our homestead videos because uh, we feel like we need to. That's an outreach uh, that we need to utilize, and so that's what we are going to do. I like combinations when you can get them, right? So our chickens can provide both meat and eggs. Uh, as we grow in, in our chickens, we want to raise heritage-type breed meat chickens uh, that lay eggs really well too. So um, Rhode Island Reds, Orpingtons, uh, Buff Orpingtons that is, um, those type of chickens. Uh, rabbits, uh, the type of rabbit we're trying to get into raising mostly uh, would be a standard uh, Rex rabbit, which I just got um, chased into the other day. You don't need to say standard, just Rex, <laughs> right? Just a Rex rabbit. But I want to emphasize not a mini, right? I don't know why you want to raise a mini meat rabbit. Um, so, uh, they're really good uh, meat rabbit. Uh, people like to buy them as pets. Uh, and uh, they've got a really good fur that uh, quite potentially, if we wanted to ever try to preserve, we could uh, use to make other things or uh, even sell and try to make a little bit of money. So, um, at least starting out, our goals are uh, to be able to hunt, gather, grow, raise uh, enough uh, and sell a little bit of stuff here and there 
to just cover the cost, right? So if we can get our groceries for free, um, that's a win uh, in our book, right? Yeah. And so uh, my wife makes all of our soap, uh, all of that stuff. If we can just get it to where, like even these YouTube channels, right? Um, eventually I hope that they grow enough that it just like pays our internet bill, right? Um, that way uh, we can continue to pump out this content uh, to help people and it pays our internet bill, right? And so uh, that's kind of our first line goals, right? Um, it's just how do we get it to pay for itself? Because if it doesn't pay for itself, uh, I'm just going to be honest, it ain't worth doing, right? If, if we're not getting uh, yeah. groceries uh, and it, it benefiting us um, in that way, then all of the work and all of the efforts really, uh, you get really good food, I guess, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, but I don't know if it's really worth the effort at that point. Uh, freedom, uh, too, is a big part of it for us. These squirrels were fairly young, uh, but I'm going to try to keep it turned down uh, and fry them slower. That way they're more tender. Uh, nothing more aggravating than a tough squirrel <laughs> to try to eat. This is going to be like brunch. Yeah. yeah. So it turns out videotaping stuff takes longer than just doing it yourself. Which is why I'm not good at videotaping. <laughs> so, uh... If anybody's wondering, uh, he's just, you know, acting up for the camera. No, uh, I like to be a little bit goofy. No, he's way. goofy all the time. Yeah, I like being goofy. <laughs> so my wife is, right, we like combinations as we're making breakfast. She is looking for some more chickens. Anybody uh, that has ever really set in to serve the Lord can tell you that when you set out serving the Lord, uh, there's lots of trials that come your way. Yes. So this is um, this is the third revival we've been in this year. I through can't COVID. remember. I think somewhere around the third revival uh, through COVID. Uh, the last revival we was in before this <laughs> one was an 18-day revival, uh, which was really, really good. Had a great time. Uh, people got saved. A great work of the Lord. Uh, but we also uh, had a chicken massacre, and we lost like 10 chickens in one night. I uh, woke up one morning uh, and all of our baby rabbits, something took the feeder off of uh, our baby rabbit tractor uh, and there was baby rabbits all over our yard uh, and I also backed into our garage door and <laughs> broke one of our mirrors on our, on what I call our nice car, on our <laughs> good running car and so, um, however, uh, we did get blessed with some more chickens uh, after the chicken massacre uh, by a neighbor. Yes. And um, which we're very thankful for. Uh, and so we've kind of rebuilt our chicken coop into a more mobile chicken tractor that I use our little putt putt tractor to move them with. Um, and they're a little more secure. Uh, but we don't have as many uh, as we would like to have. Uh, so we are also, all right, don't judge us because I know, right, flour and all that on our squirrel, but we're trying to eat a lower carb diet that's helpful for my wife especially and in case you guys haven't noticed I could definitely shed a pound or two or 75 <laughs> and, um, so eggs are an excellent 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 low carb thing but anybody that's ever had chickens knows that they always slack way off uh, through the winter time and so uh, if you want good amount of eggs you either need to find a way to preserve those eggs from the summertime or you need to have enough chickens that you're still getting a good amount of eggs in the wintertime and so she is actively craigslisting uh, some chickens looking right now uh, for some chickens maybe today uh, we can find some we'll take you guys on a journey to go get some chickens so our lard uh, we just put it in the skillet a good seasoned cast iron skillet uh, we're letting our lard melt down here uh, it gets hot enough here in a little bit we will Start frying some delicious, tasty squirrel. Trying to find chickens. Chickens are frustrating because people want a lot for their chickens, uh, which I don't blame them, right? Um, but I just hate paying, you know, 10, 12 bucks a bird. And so um, that adds up quick, right? 
Uh, you got you got to lay a lot of eggs to make up for uh, forty dollars worth of chickens, and so um, if they're you know ten bucks and you only get four hens and you get one egg a day off of those hens, uh, man, it'd take a long time for that to ever pay out. So we're trying to find some chickens, uh, and we'll try to do some trading hopefully uh, with whatever we have got. We've got a great mass amount of pickles this year uh, in okra uh, that we've pickled. Uh, and that kind of stuff. So we may try to use that for barter or soap uh, or stuff we've got. So also in this journey, we are trying to figure out what all we think we actually have to have. Uh, which we're, so we're trying to minimize uh, the amount of stuff we have because we just don't want to go. And so if we can offload some stuff to get chickens, then it's a win-win. Uh, you guys hear that? That's music to an old fat boy's ears right there. <laughs> something hitting some hot grease uh, one of my favorite food groups right here uh, fried uh, my other favorite food group top two food groups are fried and barbecued right uh, those are favorite food groups for sure so this morning uh, it's just two squirrels uh, is all we're cooking up and that will be plenty uh, for us, we'll have leftovers. So my daughter, oldest daughter at her grandma's, if she finds out that we ate squirrel without her, uh, she will be mad. <laughs> yeah, she likes squirrels. So we're going to make sure and save her some. Uh, I know that's another thing, right? You guys may be thinking like, man, my kids, they're just, they're not going to like it, right? Um, can I tell you that we have found that our children anyway uh, love, uh, or at least the oldest one, but, uh, loves this kind of food. Uh, she loves uh, growing her own food. She understands that, and, and we've been very honest with her, right? Those rabbits are for butchering. Those chickens are for laying eggs and butchering. Um, the rabbits was a little harder on her when I butchered some, uh, but uh, she likes the food. And I think part of the reason why she likes it is we don't make a big deal about like, more we're eating this wild squirrel, right? It's like we're just—it's just food. It's just food, right? We're just having squirrel tonight, just like you know most people would have spaghetti, Burger. right? Yeah. And you know, she's all over it. So I know some of you maybe are thinking, right? Like maybe I would try it, but my kids, there's no way they would ever eat it. Um, if you talk about it in a normal fashion, like, hey, we're just, you know, what are you guys having for dinner? Yeah, we're gonna have squirrel. Um, the more normalized it seems, uh, I think. You know, most children anyway, be all about it. So, uh, I'm not encouraging lying, all right? I'm a pastor. I'm not going to tell you to lie. Uh, however, I do know that one time my dad was making squirrel and noodles for dinner. Uh, most of y'all know about chicken and noodles. He was making squirrel and noodles. Um, and my little sister come in the house and she goes, Hey, Daddy, you making uh, chicken and noodles? And Dad just goes, Yep, and never said a word, right? <laughs> Which he shouldn't have lied, maybe. Um but, uh, you know, something like that. Another great way to cook squirrel in a crock pot. Uh, and then you just peel it down uh, like pulled pork and you put some barbecue sauce on it. Make you a pulled squirrel sandwich with barbecue sauce. Uh, get you some good bread and butter pickles. Uh, get you some good uh, potato salad uh, or macaroni salad. Or some good coleslaw. And uh, it's good stuff, right? Uh, and that's good ways to start introducing uh, those kind of foods into your meal, I think, you know. So what's your favorite way? We, we, we've grilled squirrel, fried it. What's your favorite way to eat squirrel, babe? Um, probably fried. Fried, good old yeah. classic yeah. fried squirrel. So here is our squirrel being fried up this morning for breakfast. Nice and slow, nice slow fry. I get it nice and tender. Uh, should be good to eat. Um, probably put a lid over it so it'll kind of halfway. Uh, yeah, why don't we do that? We'll put a lid over it too. Put a good flavor uh, on this stuff. Why don't you guys take a look at it? We'll show you whenever it's done. So I want you guys to finish product here. Uh, here's our scrambled eggs. And I just left the uh, drippings from the fried squirrel in the pan. Uh, they'll be delicious in our eggs. Here is our fried squirrel. 
uh, that we're going to have and some fresh tomato that we're going to have uh, with our so this morning uh, these are eggs from our chickens uh, here on the place this is squirrel from here on the place uh, that we shot uh, and this is tomato from here on the place so uh, if you think about it right uh, we got very little invested uh, into this breakfast uh, we know where the food come from we know uh, how it got to where it's going to be on our table uh, and so this morning we're going to sit down uh, and enjoy us some nice good home cooked uh, brunch at this point so guys thank you for tagging along for our first video hopefully the videos will get better as we go along uh, and we will uh, try to do more of this guys we thank you for watching please remember to like uh, and subscribe to our page pretty please all right tell them all goodbye uh, please remember to like and subscribe to our page uh, look up those other guys too that we talked about right Doug and Stacy um, if you're in the market for uh, a log cabin man uh, look them up uh, share uh, their stuff um, living traditions homestead maybe is the other one Justin Rhodes uh, look up all of that stuff uh, guys uh, look at those people up they'll have way better videos than what I have uh, but they've been doing it a lot longer too so uh, we'll see what we can do but guys uh, thanks for coming along we appreciate you uh, we'll see you next time Lord willing thanks